Good, good afternoon, Chairperson, those here, members of this committee. I thank you for the opportunity to speak very briefly on behalf of Eco Action, Environmental Community Action Statewide uh, Group, helping communities to organize to address environmental health issues. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of our Executive Director, Carla Lewis. I was the former Executive Director. What I'm saying is threefold. Eco Action has been engaged in helping communities organize to facilitate community engagement with regard into the process of developing planning for parks over the past uh, to, uh, 20 plus years. And in the process of doing that, I am here to request that what Eco Action want, we'd like to see, is sustainable and equitable maintenance of all parks. Of all parks. Let me say that with sustainable and equitable maintenance of all parks, not just some parks. And in order for that to, to happen, we have, I'm saying that we have to have scheduled maintenance, which I believe is the life wire of a sustainable park. If we don't have scheduled maintenance and it's not budgeted for, it does not happen. And we have examples in our parks, as we all know, it's not just for recreation today, it also serves as a reservoir, as a, as, as a place, as a source where we are able to catch up storm water so that we don't have sewer overflow in Atlanta. That's a big problem that you all know about. So the parks are serving as a system of nature to help us address flooding issues. Uh, you know, in Metro Atlanta, and part, part of, can you please help me pass this to the council? Four Corners Park that are related to inadequacy of green infrastructure at this particular park. Eco action, we work in many parks, supporting park pride and others that are helping to ensure equity in the process of developing parks. So what am I asking for? What is eco action asking for? That you should please support and advance equitable funding, sustainable funding for the Department of Parks and Recreation so that, so that they can do what they have to do, not just for a few parks, for all parks. So let us focus on equitable outcomes, embodying social and environmental economics. If indeed we want sustainable and equitable maintenance for all parks in Atlanta. Thank you, Dr. Yami. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Right. Our next speaker is Dr. Nataki Osborne Jones. Thank you, Chairman Dozier, and to all the members of the council who are assembled. Uh, my name is Dr. Nataki Osborne Jelks. I'm a resident of the Cascade Heights community, and I'm also co founder and executive director of the West Atlanta Watershed Alliance, otherwise known as Wawa. I'm here today to also talk about an increase in funding uh, for the park's budget, particularly in terms of maintenance and stewardship. If equity is a priority for the city, more equitable investments are needed across parks uh, in all neighborhoods in the city. If it were not for grassroots organizations like Wawa or for the work of everyday citizens who do things like pull invasive plants, pick up trash, and sometimes even mow city parks on their own, the divide would look even greater between parks and more affluent parts of our community um, who often have maintenance and stewardship subsidized by park conservancies and those parks in more economically challenged areas of the city. In the English Avenue neighborhood, there is a community um, a green team in which organizations such as Park Pride, the Conservation Fund, Partnership for Southern Equity, and Wawa have invested dollars and supported the training and development of this neighborhood-led green team to maintain green infrastructure features in the Lindsay Street, Maddie Freeland, and Katherine Johnston Memorial Parks. 
This green team has more specialized training and knowledge than many of the Parks Department workforce in terms of green infrastructure. Um, and that's because of the lack of investment in advanced training and the lack of bodies to share in the massive work that our Parks Department needs to do. I also want to point out the need for more resources to be allocated to nature preserves, such as the Outdoor Activity Center, where, where Wawa's home is, and the Cascade Springs Nature Preserve, which is my neighborhood park. While there has been a steady build over the years, visitation to Atlanta's nature preserves reached a crescendo during the height of the pandemic that has been sustained. These green jewels in our communities don't get the resources that they deserve, nor do they get adequate resources to match the stress placed on them through increased visitation. In many instances, they don't even show up in the parks department's funding matrix because they are not traditional parks. This has to change and it can change with more, invest more investments. I'll end by just saying that a well-maintained park system must be a standard and not an exception to the rule. So I'm asking, as you deliberate, as you're working with your colleagues in the Parks Department, we need to ensure that more funding is invested in maintenance for our parks. If, we, if we're going to maintain a system that we want, that we all can be proud of, if we want to make sure that every citizen um, has lives within a 10 minute walk of a quality park, then investment in maintenance and stewardship has to be a priority. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rob Rauner. I am a resident of Ponzi Highland and the executive director of the Atlanta Beltline Partnership. Uh, we are the 501c3 nonprofit that supports the Beltline vision uh, through fundraising, programming, and advocacy. Uh, Council Member Dozier, thank you for your leadership on the ABI board. Uh, and thank you to all the council members with whom we have worked uh, in the past and for your support of the Atlanta Beltline over the years. Uh, I am here today to support Atlanta's Parks Department and encourage you all to think not only about funding for the FY24 budget, uh, but really to think boldly about long-term funding solutions. You know about unfunded parks positions, comparisons to other cities on cost per acre, uh, long mowing cycles, all the other data that you know, supports the need for more funding. I'm not here to beat those drums. I want to discuss what's possible. I want to discuss what we can achieve if drawing on the words of our mayor, we draw circles around our parks and we treat them like a group project. Some of you attended Park Pride's conference yesterday. You heard all the ways the parks improve quality of life, uh, including their critical connection to public health. Simply stated, parks make people live longer. I know you heard the mayor cite the hundreds of acres being acquired uh, for parks at the State of the City this morning, and I know we all continue to want to see Atlanta's ascension up the park score rankings. How do we do it? We must work together to grow the funding pie, and high-quality, well-funded parks maintenance is the key to doing that. I've been with the Atlanta Beltline Partnership since 2006. Uh, during that time, we have raised approximately $200 million, $200 million to support the Beltline, and the vast majority of that has been for parks and trails. Within the past few years, and in response to significant public investment, like the Special Service District that the City Council passed in 2021, we raised more than $100 million from the Robert W. Woodruff Foundation and the James M. Cox Foundation to complete the full 22-mile Beltline Trail Corridor, and $17 million from the Blank Foundation to help open the first phase of Westside Park. Right now, we are actively pursuing many, many millions of philanthropic dollars to build Enota Park and future phases of Westside Park, both on the west side. We are not alone. Many park-focused nonprofits, including those I serve with on the Mayor's Green Advisory Council, secure substantial investments from donors to grow and improve America Atlanta's park system. But there is more money sitting on the sidelines. I can tell you that the generosity of Atlanta's donors has come despite the city not having a long-term funding plan to maintain a best-in-class park system. A long-term funding solution is the key to unlocking major, major investments. Taxpayers, foundations, people just want to have confidence that the city will take care of their investment in parks. You've got a smart, energetic parks commissioner who will be honest about what it costs to maintain the system and deliver a high standard of care. And you have lots of partners 
in the nonprofit and philanthropic community rather ready to work with you to help you figure this out so that Atlanta can be a best in class park system. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ronner. Getting to be a regular occurrence. Um, so number one, I want to thank you for um, uh, giving me a moment to, to, to speak with you today. We're coming off of um, a lot of great activity this past weekend. We announced uh, when public with our $12.8 million Parks for All campaign. Um, and uh, yesterday we uh, had a few friends over to the Botanical Garden. Around 500 people showed up um, for a conference focused on the healing power of parks. Um, this is budget season. And we are approaching budget season, uh, pulling out all the stops this year. You're, you've been hearing over these different meetings, a range of different partners that are all bringing this message that we need to see an increase in funding for park maintenance. And I think some of the different things that we've heard today really underscore those elements. There's an article that uh, Maria Supporta wrote that highlights our campaign. And in there, it has a healthy dose of a portion that looks at the fact that it is a new bar. It's a new day in the city, and it's a, re a reflection of this administration, uh, this mayor, this parks commissioner, and this council that are really leaning in in a lot of different ways. And we have some great wins to look at. Um, the $12.8 million campaign that we've announced, we're 70% towards that goal. And the first dollars in were from the, the, the Woodruff Foundation in the city of Atlanta. More recently, we had $2.8 million of discretionary dollars that have gone, come from different council members. And I heard in this room, as we had the parks commissioner sharing his effort, uh, council member Lewis uh, sharing that uh, council members are stepping up. We really need to make sure that we're stepping up on the maintenance side of things to maintain our parks and make sure that we have an adequate budget. So um, I think we have a lot to be proud of in terms of where we're at. Um, I think Rob's point is well taken that there's money sitting on the sidelines and even with this campaign getting from 70 percent, we get a lot of questions about whether or not there's going to be a change. Um, I often have described to folks this Parks for All campaign that we're doing things differently and expecting a different result. And I think so, too, we need to move to a point that the budget conversation is not a budget that is so constrained that the Parks Department is not equipped to do the job that it's supposed to do. In that column that I shared, it mentions that there's a 26 percent um, um, uh, gap right now in terms of uh, uh, positions within the Parks Department, open positions within the Parks Department. So one in four. And out of those, 60% of those, those, of those positions are unfunded. So just to get to uh, the, the funding for filling those, the, the, those unfunded positions, you would need about a $2 million increase from where we're at right now. And that only gets us to the level of, of park maintenance that we had before the pandemic. So I would just encourage you as you're talking to the administration and they're asking what your priorities, and I've spoken to some of you that unsolicited have shared that uh, park maintenance is at the very top of your list. When you look at issues of park equity, the single thing that raises the floor for our parks is getting to the point that we're, we're addressing adequate maintenance. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Catherine Spillman, and I'm the executive director of the Atlanta Memorial Park Conservancy in the 8th District. Thank you for allowing me the time to talk with you about the need for additional funding for park maintenance in the city of Atlanta. Today, I will share some of the Atlanta Memorial Park Conservancy's experiences on maintenance issues in Atlanta Memorial Park. While each park in the city has its own unique set of issues, some of the maintenance issues I will be discussing today are maintenance issues experienced throughout our park system. These ongoing issues need attention, which only additional dollars dedicated to maintenance can help solve. As executive director of the Atlanta Memorial Park Conservancy for the last nine years, and a park volunteer and advocate for many years before that, I have witnessed the ebbs and flows in the city being able to provide the level of maintenance in our parks that we all need and deserve from a world-class city. Atlanta is a city that aspire, that others aspire to become. We need to live up to that standard and having exceptional parks that are well-maintained is one of the ways to do that. If COVID did anything positive for our city, it highlighted how important parks are for the mental health and well-being of its citizens. With more people using parks than ever before, and with the additional 260 acres that were added just last year, 
we cannot continue to underfund maintenance needs in our parks. In the last few years, I have sometimes struggled to get trash cans that are overflowing emptied, slippery mud covered sidewalks cleared, broken playground equipment fixed, and DDH trees that could fall on park visitors removed. I provided some examples, two copies for y'all to review. It's not that these issues are being ignored by the Parks Department. It's that there is either such a backlog or a staffing shortage that these issues are sometimes not being resolved in a timely manner. Every single Parks employee I know does the best that they can do under the circumstances. It's simply that they are stretched too thin from top to bottom. We all know the feeling of juggling too many balls in the air. That is what is happening with maintenance in our parks. Imagine each ball is an acre of parkland being maintained and then add 260 more balls to what you're already juggling. The city can't manage or maintain all of those acres successfully without additional help in the way of funding. Balls will begin to drop and are dropping. In some cases, the balls can bounce back. In the case of overflowing trash cans, they just need to be emptied. Other balls don't bounce back and can have serious consequences. DDH trees that are left standing can fall on visitors or on maintenance workers. I have personally experienced one near miss from a diseased ash branch that fell five feet away from me when we were having a volunteer day in the park. Thank you, Ms. Spillman. Time has expired. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Joanna Powell and I am representing MPUG. I am the secretary and I am also the park chair. And I have been trying to get our park in our neighborhood. It's a neighborhood park. And most people, when they think of parks, they're thinking of big parks. But the neighborhood parks are always neglected. And I grew up in the neighborhood in which I now move back into my neighborhood. And my neighborhood is composed of mostly seniors that want to use our park. And they can't use our park because it's not handicap accessible. And the track that surrounds our park, it is not rubberized, so it has bothered their needs. And now those seniors go to Cobb County to take advantage of their parks and recs, which is ridiculous to me. So I wanted to know how can we get a permanent line item for park maintenance, not just, you know, one year to the next year, permanent, permanent, just like other departments. So that's all I wanted to say is related to Lillian Car Cooper Sh Shepherd Park. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon to each of you. As you know, my name is Ola Reynolds and just a little bit about me. I have lived in Northwest Atlanta for 50 plus years. I know I don't look like it, but I have. Uh, so, <laughs> Uh, and also Northwest Atlanta in, in the community of Monroe Heights. I'm a former chairperson for Neighborhood Planning Unit G, and I am still very active in my community. And my reason for being interested in uh, the Chattahoochee Brick Company Memorial Green Space, because the community still need to have a voice and I will be a voice crying in the wilderness for my community. And I'm so glad to hear Councilmember Lewis being excited by park, because with that being said, with more parks coming, you know, we're gonna need more money. So I just had to add <laughs> at that as well. And also for our small parks, the pocket parks, because I'm expecting to have a pocket park in my community, in the Monroe Heights. And we're going to need funds to maintain that park. That is something coming up. Maybe I shouldn't have said, but I mean, it's I've said it now. So that is one of my reasons being interested. You heard what Mr. Sharp said about the Chattahoochee uh, Trail. He and I have worked for years and uh, because we are neighboring NPUs, G and D connects. And so we just want to keep things going. We have a momentum going and excited about what happened that the Chattahoochee Brick Company has been purchased. And so we're just 
you, we just want to see things to keep moving as it is. So that's why I am interested in being on the committee. Executive Director of Historic Oakland Foundation. Um, I'm here with our friends at Park Pride to encourage you, as you work on the budget this year, to substantially increase the budget for park maintenance for the Department of Parks and Rec. We know that parks and green space are an essential part of what makes Atlanta, Atlanta. They're also an integral part of Atlantans' lives. Seniors enjoy exercise programs at Chastain Park. Kids play on the playground at Westside Park or play baseball at Perkinson. Communities gather and enjoy festivals at Howe Park or Grant Park. People make lifelong friends and build community over kickball in Piedmont Park, midnight basketball at C.T. Martin, or at the D.H. Stanton Splash Pad. And of course, Atlantans learn about the city's past and how to chart a more just and equitable future together at the site of the Chattahoochee Brick Company or Historic Oakland Cemetery. We all know that parks are an essential part of a healthy, happy, happy, safe, and prosperous community, but not just parks, safe, well-maintained parks. Parks that don't have cracked sidewalks or down tree limbs or overgrown grass. Parks that people want to use. Parks that people enjoy using. Parks that become an essential part of our lives, of our city's fabric. We know that great, well-maintained parks are not just nice to have, but are an essential part of healthy, vibrant neighborhoods communities and cities. One of the many things we learned from the pandemic is the importance of parks and green space for our mental health, physical well-being, and sense of community and communal well-being. And yet, reflecting back on last year, we know that adequate, let alone good, park maintenance was a real challenge for the Department of Parks and Rec. Even at Historic Oakland Cemetery, where we're fortunate enough to have a nonprofit organization that I lead, working alongside Parks and Rec to support maintenance, the city crew were short staffed for much of the year, and sections of the cemetery became overgrown and unruly. This has been a common issue, common issue throughout the city. So I urge you, City Council, to continue investing in our city's parks and green space, both in acquiring more land so parks are more accessible to everybody, but also to make sure that the maintenance budget goes up so that all of our incredible parks are given the love and care that they need every single day to make Atlanta's park system truly one of the best in the country. Thank you for your time. Thank you for all you do for the city. And thank you for your hard work in supporting parks. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Greg Levine, I'm the co-executive director of Trees Atlanta. And like uh, Michael, um, over the, I've been working for Trees Atlanta for 28 years and I've seen the funding, unfortunately, not growing along with the beauty of growth in our parks. And I think that just observing observing for all that time and actually running an organization where we have to hire people on a seasonal basis. We hire 18 people this year. It's very challenging because we can compete with salaries. And one of the main reasons why I think uh, Parks Department has that challenge is y'all also are having a challenge keeping up with the, the seasonal salaries. And one of the reasons why I think we need to get this budget up is so that we can move from a seasonal positions more of them to full-time positions. We have a, you know, a lot of people will get hired for mowing and blowing in the spring and summer. And then when winter comes, maybe, uh, let many of the people go and we have problems with a growing graffiti problem, uh, trash in our parks, as what's been said earlier. And also um, just the uh, maintenance of our trees it's a big challenge. We don't have enough crews that are maintaining our trees. There's both a, there's a, obviously I could go on for hours about the importance of trees and the environmental benefits, but also just from a standpoint of safety for the community, um, you want the, our trees to be healthy in our parks and along our streets. And right now those crews are, are very minimal. Uh, so we really need to, to uh, bring up the salaries to, to maintain um, keeping staff, but also to, to transfer the seasonal so make them more full-time it's very hard to hire people as y'all know right now uh and y'all salaries are better than ours and we're all having a hard time uh hiring people uh and one more uh sure i remember everything here the uh, forestry crews specifically i think right now we have one crew that removes and prunes trees and we've got miles and miles of streets uh, a number of years we had somebody, um, you know, a family that was killed by a fallen tree. It's not good for a, for a, 
keeping trees when the trees do those things. The tree was dead and dying. It should have been removed. It was not a city tree, but that is a challenge. And we have so many city trees that are necessary for the health of the city. So not to remove the trees, but remove the hazard. Again, just more funding for it. So thank you for all your work and your time. Uh, Carrie Salvary, I'm a resident of Vine City Community, and I'm here today representing the Alliance for the Activation of Cook Park. And I guess all of you know that Cook Park is a new park, um, and the park is very, very well attended. Um, the people are out there enjoying themselves uh, constantly and consistently. We do have some other issues other than maintenance, but that's not a subject for this discussion today. But I will say that, you know, based on my experience in being in the park um, and as an observer and as user, I can say that our schedule for maintenance needs to be improved um, because of the park is as used as well as it is, um, the days of maintenance is not enough. Someone should be in the park every day, not every other day, cleaning the park. And I can tell you, and I think uh, the former commissioner and the new commissioner can tell you about the number of pictures that I take on a regular basis, sending them to the parks department. Uh, allowing them to see how trash is overflowing on a consistent basis. Um, and there's some, mainly it's the trash um, that's not being picked up and what, what I consider to be really consistently. Um, I think the graffiti, um, I was out there the other day having lunch and on the, um, on the pavilion where I was, the table was just completely filled with graffiti. And so I can't tell you how often, you know, someone comes to investigate, you know, how the surfaces are being cleaned and such, but obviously it's not enough. We also have graffiti that's um, resident on the new signs that we have out there. I don't know how often they clean those signs, but the, but the graffiti is consistent. So I said all that to say that we don't want to see our park, you know, devolve into a park that have been in, that, that have been in place for a long time. And, and I will share this story with you when the park first opened. I called my son, he lives in Seattle, and I was so excited. The park is opened, it's really great. And he says, well, Ma, I just hope in five years, you can say the same thing. And so what we don't want to see in five years, the level of maintenance to be decreased. And at the point of where we are now, with the lack of investment by the city council, you know, in the whole parks situation, I think that we will probably arrive there. And I will also say this, if it is a priority for the city of Atlanta, for the city of Atlanta to have increased parks and increased park space, it is also an obligation and it should be your desire to make sure that the existing parks are well maintained and safe on a consistent basis. Thank you, Ms. Albury. Greetings from Pittsburgh community and from Pittman Park. My name is Winfrey Young. I'm chair of Friends of Pittman Park, vice president of the Pittsburgh Neighborhood Association and CFO of the Pittsburgh Collaborative. And I'm here like a number of folk to ask city council to please consider funding over and above what is already being funded for Parks and Recreation. Um, Friends of Pittman Park came into existence in 2019. Before that, our park had a swing set and a climbing frame that were donated from another park and some adult um, exercise equipment, two of, two of the pieces that kept falling over. Um, since Friends of Pittman Park came into being, we've gotten wonderful support 
from Park Pride, um, going on $200,000 in grants, and the park is so much better than it was. People are coming out to the park again from Pittsburgh residents and, and beyond. We have a new volleyball, basketball court, um, a beautiful pavilion with uh, picnic tables and some grills, a huge new swing set. The problem is that people are walking up over past trash to come to the park. Um, we're not getting the grass cut. Uh, we're not getting uh, the trees taken care of. We had two 40-foot trees that fell over, and they fell so that they were leaning against each other at least eight feet above the ground, just waiting to fall. And it took two, three phone calls to try to get somebody to come there. We The best um, maintenance we saw was the week before the mayor showed up to do the ribbon, ribbon cutting on our new volleyball and basketball court. Mulch was put down. The mold on the sidewalks was pressure washed away. It looked like a brand new park, which caused the residents to even more upset because they were like, this is what happens when the mayor comes. What about all the other time? So I am here with my last 40 seconds to say that it is very important for funding to happen that allows for either more hiring of folk, whatever um, parks and recreations needs to bring equitable maintenance to parks like Pittman Park in communities like Pittsburgh, um, we deserve the same amount of um, attention as Piedmont Park. And I hope that you will consider that as you're talking about this budget and funding for the next year. Um, my name is Taryn Arbeiter. I'm coming from Chiswick Park. I'm the president of Friends of Chiswick Park. And I have with me our vice president, Bobby Spiller. We have some handouts, so I'm just gonna wait until those are distributed. To start my time, hopefully. Okay, so Chosewood Park is a 17-acre uh, park at the heart of our Chosewood neighborhood geographically, but uh, culturally and in terms of our community, unfortunately, it's not there yet. Um, part of the reason is lack of funding for maintenance for the park. And so you can see in the handout that we've distributed that we are dealing with a lot of dumping, tires, TVs, furniture, litter, um, concrete bases of posts, uh, concrete blocks um, that are not uh, picked up on a regular basis. Our community does hold quarterly work days to try to deal with the amount of dumping that we receive as well as other park maintenance issues. Um, but even having, you know, volunteer groups of 30 people quarterly isn't really enough to do the maintenance all by ourselves, nor do we really have the time and energy to continue doing it as volunteers um, when it really should be the city's responsibility to maintain our park. Um, we're also dealing with a significant amount of overgrowth um, that you can see in these photos here. Uh, we've, uh, the commu community has raised 50,000, is raising $50,000 to do a five-year kudzu removal plan in the park in order to make the park accessible to users. However, right now, um, there is just a mess of kudzu and um, garbage all over the um, one side of the park. And so uh, that's a problem that the city has let God get out of control um, since they acquired the property in 2009, um, parts of the property. The other uh, maintenance issues we deal with are um, you can see on the second page, third page um, that there is some drainage infrastructure that was installed in our park in 1981. Um, however, it was not maintained. And so there's 12 inches about of leaf litter and dirt that caused flooding in the park. Um, so we went down with there with a shovel and dug out the, the drainage um, and then eventually installed some riprap and that kind of thing to prevent further flooding. Um, but that was like a completely unacceptable state for our amenities. And it was also a waste of city money because our tennis court was flooding and it caused a need to resurface. Um, in addition, there's um, large concrete garbage um, cans that are, there's about three or four in the park um, that don't have garbage cans anymore. I think our maintenance schedule is about weekly, if that. Um, so there are just a lot of um, maintenance issues. You can look through these photographs and see there's also a lot of downed trees that make it uh, impossible to pass through the park and fully use the 17 acres that um, we truly value. We just need better maintenance to access. Um, 
So anything else? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, three seconds. <laughs> Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Again, um, I'm chairperson for Parks and Recreation uh, and NPUP in Southwest Atlanta. I want to thank you guys for giving us an opportunity to come here for this. Uh, we're developing Melvin Drive Park. Everybody's probably heard of Melvin Drive Park. Uh, while I'm speaking, there's a quarter of a million dollar uh, playground being installed due to what Park Pride did for our community. We're appreciative of that. Just uh, a Sunday a week ago, we had a tar cleanup over at, tire cleanup over at Melvin Drive Park. It's about 50 yards of tires, the tires that were dumped there. When I became um, chairperson for Parks and Rec, uh, the park was known for bodies, burnt cars, 50 acres. That's a lot of land. So we've done a lot there. And we installed the dog park, and we found the 50 acres of tires lined there, and I sent those out. The commissioner has a picture of some of those. So, you know, uh, they have... They have a process now to actually get the rest of the tars out of the ground over there. It, it's it's not something recent. It's something that's been there for a while. The tars have become embedded, so they're going to have to get equipment in there. You better bet you about a dollar. I got my eyes on them. Uh, the other thing that I want to talk about is Ben Hill, uh, Ben Hill Park, William Walker Recreation Center. We have a three, almost five million dollar astroturf field. We have an erosion problem. We have water and stuff running all down on the field, and it's going to deteriorate that field. And we have the great, we have the largest little league football program in the, in the city. A lot of professional players have played on that field. So we need to get that done. Um, the other thing is at the Wheel Walker Recreation Center, some of the things I've seen in the restrooms, uh, ancient uh, blowing machines. You know, you don't have towels till we use the blowers to, we need to have those updated. Those things probably have been there 40 years. So that's that's what my concern is. And that's pretty much all I have to say and thank you. Um, I'm just gonna take just a few seconds to echo some of the comments of my park colleagues. Um, my name is Sandra Kruger. I'm the executive director for the Olmstead Linear Park Alliance why we do struggle with our own maintenance issues, um, stormwater issues. I do want to sort of lift up those who have spoken and those who have not spoken today, but still have the same issues that we um, continue to um, have in our communities. Um, for me, um, when we devalue our community and we don't value the, the nature spaces and the open spaces. We dehumanize our communities and we're not taking care of them and maintaining them as they should be ma uh, maintained. We're, really, we're basically telling people we don't care. <laughs> and I know we do care. And so that's why I'm asking if you will please just consider, you know, the maintenance um, a priority for these parks and green spaces, because as we know, during the pandemic, they, they were our saving grace and they continue to be. Um, we need to maintain these communities for our generations that come after us. This, this is not a present issue. This is something that's generational. So we need to take that in consideration. Um, and I just say in closing, <laughs> Atlanta has an opportunity to be to, the opportunity to be a catalyst for transformation national change, excuse me, and um, and we have an opportunity to showcase to the rest of the world. Um, we do a lot of things right, we've done a lot of things wrong, but I think this is one opportunity that we can really shine. Thank you. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Lester Duncan. I'm the CEO with Greening Youth Foundation, one of the nonprofits uh, founded, rooted, based here in Atlanta, and one of the member organizations of the Green Space Advisory Council. Um, I'm here in support of many of my park advocate colleagues um, asking for uh, asking for this council to really prioritize maintenance for our parks, um, not only for the reasons mentioned by my colleagues in terms of uh, making sure that our city remains beautiful, uh, making sure that our residents feel valued, uh, 
uh, but also because it creates a unique opportunity also for youth employment within our city, um, in a city where especially black youth um, are, are underemployed, uh, employment rates amongst black youth um, are significantly higher than the unemployment rate that has been declining uh, here in the city of Atlanta and across Georgia and the U.S. Um, Greening Youth Foundation is a nonprofit focused on cultivating the next generation of diverse environmental leaders. And so we're uh, really proud to partner with the Department of Parks and Rec to provide opportunity for youth uh, that are disconnected from employment opportunities, disconnected from school, youth that are at risk for not only homelessness, substance abuse issues, um, violence and so forth, connecting them to, to, to viable career opportunities in the green space environment as well. And so uh, we want to stand in, in, in partnership with many of our parks advocates, uh, with the Mayor's Green Space Advisory Council, with Park Pride, uh, to, really, to really encourage uh, this council to prioritize the maintenance of our green spaces here in Atlanta. Thank you. Yeah, very nice. Great, thank you. So again, my name is Rachel Marr. I'm the Director of Communications and Policy at Park Pride. Uh, Park Pride has been a trusted partner to communities and, and the city of Atlanta for over 30 years, engaging communities to activate the power of parks. I am here today to insist on an increase in the FY 2024 budget for park maintenance. Um, an article written by myself and Park Pride's executive director uh, is appearing in the supporter report called Aspiring to a Higher Standard for Our Parks. And I believe you all have a copy of that in front of you now, but I wanted to elevate a few points. Great parks are good for people, communities, the environment, and cities. We learned how true the statement is during the pandemic. You may recall at the time that it was a question as to whether parks would remain open when we couldn't be inside at a restaurant or a sports event, park visitation spiked and appreciation for green spaces and trails soared. The relief that parks gave us during the pandemic, physically, mentally, socially, was beyond measure. With more foot traffic in park came more litter and trash and sometimes it piled up and overflowed out of the cans. Some people said that our parks were being loved to death as other signs of wear and tear appeared that couldn't be addressed as quickly uh, as it appeared. There's simply no time. But we were grateful to our park workers who are frontline workers who showed up every day doing all they could to keep our parks clean and maintained. Fast forward to election season in 2021, everyone's talking about opening up, restaffing, coming back better, stronger, and more resilient. And Atlanta's parks and rec facilities were well positioned to be a part of the city's rejuvenation. In fact, in December of 2021, City Council unanimously adopted Activate ATL, a comprehensive plan for parks and rec that represents an extraordinary vision for a robust, well-maintained and equitable park system that provides health benefits, amenities, and the experiences that Atlantans deserve. But now it's 2023, and when I look around at the state of our parks, it feels like momentum in pursuit of that vision has slowed, challenged by barriers. For example, the serious understaffing of the Department of Parks and Recreation. Um, as of December 2022, 26% of full-time positions in DPR were vacant. And while the department has actively been promoting full-time positions, their efforts have been hindered by funding restrictions that have kept 64% of those vacant positions, more than half, unfillable because they were unfunded. The negative impact of these staffing changes uh, and shorted and shortages on the upkeep of our cherished green spaces cannot be overstated. This is not a criticism of the hard work and dedicated staff of the crews that serve our community. It's about numbers and facts. DPR has too few people to maintain the over 4,000 park acres for which it's responsible. And it's too few people because the budget is inadequate for the department's needs. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Warner. Hello, everyone. So again, I'm Michael Halleck, Executive Director for Park Pride. And I also am here to urge you to increase the FY 2024 budget for park maintenance. As we aspire to a higher standard for our parks, I think it's important to recognize that park maintenance is not a new issue. It goes back decades. It's a chronic issue that needs our attention now. For those who feel we already put a lot of resources towards our parks, let's dig a little deeper to understand the facts that bring me here today. 
In recent years, thanks to both public and private support, Atlanta has seen some significant park improve, or park investments in some spectacular parks. These parks include Westside Park and Cook Park. Uh, the city has acquired 260 acres of, of green space last year and has an, an additional 80 acres on deck for this year. Um, earlier this year, Park Pride awarded $2.5 million to 25 neighborhood parks. It's our single largest uh, grant cycle ever with 67% of those dollars going into low-income neighborhoods. These capital improvements are going to neighborhoods uh, that have often been overlooked. And related, the recent Moving Atlanta Forward bond package will direct, will direct nearly $150 million to recreation center and park improvements. These investments are similarly dispersed throughout the city. These investments have put Atlanta on the map. Atlanta is perceived nationally as a city on the rise. Due in large part to the expanding acreage and capital investments, Atlanta shot up in this past uh, ranking of Trust for Public Land's park score, moving from 49th to 27th in a single year. This was the single largest rise of any city in the ranking for that year. Uh, however, I would caution you to assume that we will continue to rise unless we deal with the elephant in the room. It is an elephant that Atlanta's park users experience daily. The elephant is that all of these investments do nothing to address the week over week, year over year costs of implementing and adhering to park maintenance standards. Increases in the park maintenance budget have been minimal and have been done with little or no dialogue of actual need. Park maintenance has not been a priority for many years. And I think we all have experienced that firsthand. I think we can do better, um, and I think we deserve better. I think all of Atlanta deserves better. As I look around the room, I'm certain that most, if not all of you, have identified unmet maintenance needs at a park in your district and have taken the department to task in responding to those needs. I'm here to share that the issue is more pervasive than you may realize. A statistically Very valid simple. survey seeking input for Activate ATL revealed 24% of respondents felt discouraged from using park amenities because they weren't well maintained. Um, I think this is an issue that it, that is different than what we see in other parts of the country, and it's something that jumped out from the folks that were doing the study. Uh, Park Pride and our advocates are paying attention to get better. We need to bring attention to bear. We need a robust public discussion to arrive at a goal that sets us on a path for day-to-day -day maintenance that parallels our recent gains in park improvements and park acreage. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Esther Stokes, and I live at 66 Huntington Road Northeast in Brookwood Hills in District 6. I have been involved with Park Pride over many years, serving on the board for a total of 12 years, including serving as board chair. I have also been involved with other organizations in the city and currently serve on the board of Georgia Audubon. Atlanta's Department of Parks and Recreation has been underfunded all the years that I have been involved with Park Pride. This is going in and out. <laughs> the very neediest area in the department is parks maintenance. We simply do not have enough people. DPR needs real money to address these issues. The budget cycle should include a significant increase in the DPR budget. The stars seem to be aligning. We have a mayor who understands the significant role of parks in the life of Atlanta's residents and visitors. We have a new commissioner of parks and recreation who brings genuine parks department experience to the job. And he is working hard to understand the level of need in order to move the needle on parks maintenance. Properly funding parks maintenance in the Department of Parks and Recreation is long overdue. Properly funding parks maintenance will bring about substantial change that will be real and observable by the whole city. Please make this happen. Thank you.